are now moving on to my spoiler review for X-Men 97. I highly recommend people checking out my previous reviews for X-Men 97. I did an initial impressions review uh, at this point, I guess a couple months ago, and I just did a full season one review, like it was 45 or nearly 50 minutes long, talking about how much I love this show. And to be honest, with you, I really did. I absolutely loved X-Men 97. As I said in those reviews, I, I have just been floored. I've been so shocked at how great it is um, from, the, uh, from the animation to the uh, action sequences, to the characters, to the world building, to the darker and more uh, mature storytelling on display. It, it is not only an incredible uh, success story and a wonderful successor and sequel series to the original 90s X-Men the Animated Series, but I, I think it, it is definitely in the conversation in terms of being one of the best, if not the best, adaptation of, of the X-Men as a team in, in a different medium. It is just absolutely exceptional, and I highly recommend people checking it out. And, of course, it is filled with many uh, twists and, and, and turns and some stuff that, that I was just completely blown, aw uh, blown away by and, and was unexpected. I mean, so much so, so surprised that, that I even cried, you know, it, it, several times watching, watching this series, just proving how great it is. And I think it has done an excellent job in reintroducing uh, the X-Men back into the pop culture zeitgeist after the Fox era, even though we're still getting some of the uh, vestiges of it, you know, stuff like um, like Deadpool and Wolverine, of course. Uh, and that will continue on. Obviously, they're going to keep Deadpool around from, the, from that era. And we'll probably see some, other these, some of these other characters pop up in future, like, Marvel movies. But uh, in my opinion, the people that made this show... Uh, they did an excellent job, and I feel like this definitely should be used as a template for a lot of X-Men adaptations going forward. You know, just don't have everything focused on Wolverine all the time like it was, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, during the Fox era. Like, each and every one of these characters can be so great and so compelling, and, and you'll, you'll fall in love with them. And they do many interesting f things with them, whether it's to do with their relationships with each other or just showcasing their wonderful and beautiful abilities in these gorgeous action sequences. Across the board, just an amazing show. I loved it. But... There were some major moments throughout this entire season. I kind of want to go through them in, in, in order. Then, of course, I want to hear some of your guys' best, you know, favorite moments throughout this uh, entire first season. This is a full season one kind of breakdown. I mean, one of the, the biggest moments of the show, it's very early on. It's the end of episode one. But, of course, Charles Xavier, who seemingly has died and has passed away, uh, has bequeathed uh, in his will. Uh, to uh, to uh, Magneto, he's he's bequeathed his 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 fortune, his mansion, his school, and the X Men themselves to Magneto. To me, my X Men, and a lot of the season was dealing with a reformed Magneto. He has, he has a fabulous new outfit and everything. Looks very sexy. All the X-Men typically do look sexy. Many of their uh, ally supported characters look sexy too. But I love just how intimate <laughs> Magneto was with the, the team and many of these, these characters. Butting heads, but then also having these kind of wonderful, wholesome moments you know, with each other. And I thought it was great since so much of the first half of the season just is not dealing with Charles Xavier. Um, but with Magneto in a more of a leadership position, and it's kind of fraught, you know, and tense because of obviously the X-Men's history with Magneto, having fought against him and the Brotherhood for so many years, aligned themselves with him at some sometimes, but usually out of the sake of convenience. Here, Magneto is actually trying to follow Charles's point of view, and and is is and is actively trying to uh, um, make peace with humanity. Uh, and, and even though, man, and he wants to kill these humans, he's like, there are several times where the, the humans prove themselves to be just as racist and bigoted and, and they're sycophants to, to their, you know, uh, government and corporate masters. He's like, as much as I want to kill you right now, God, I do. It's making me cry so much that I do. I'm not going to do that because I want to show the world that I, I can change and that mutants and humans can live side by side. And I thought how they handled me. Magneto might be the MVP for me this season. Just everything that they did with him was absolutely fantastic and how they started out uh, with his, uh, him being reformed and then 
his relationship with Rogue, and then obviously we'll get to Genosha in just a bit. I thought that was was great, and of course his his future interactions with with Charles, which were so important in the last uh, several episodes, especially the last two episodes of the, of this most recent season. But absolutely loved what they did with um, Ma- Magneto. It's so good. It's so good. Let's see you guys are saying. What about you guys? How do you feel like they handled uh, uh, Magneto's reform? Uh, throughout this uh, season, turns out I didn't have superhero fatigue. Just wanted good. That's what it is. You just you just wanted good writing. You just wanted good storytelling. Yep, 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 yep. Agreed. X Men '97 is so fucking good. And best animated superhero show by far. Hands. It's up there for me. I think it's the best thing Marvel Animation's done. I think so. Like the only thing I would after I would I would I would say compares to is probably Spectacular Spider Man. But um, outside of that, I th- I think it's even better than that. Uh, it's been a while since I had a week-to-week show that kept me excited like this. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Bugs Daff, no joke. Haven't loved a Marvel animated show like this since Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which I didn't watch a lot of, but I know a lot of people did like that. You cried more in this than you did. I did. I did. 100%. I absolutely did. Because <laughs> it made this series made me care about these characters. I had not seen in so long. These, these variations of them. Uh, it was folks around Wolverine and the movie. Yeah, all the time. There's so many, so many of them are focusing on Wolverine. And this, and we'll get to it. Like Wolverine's not like he's in, he's in the show, and he, but he's a supporting character. He's not like the focus, you know, of of many of these a- episodes. He's just not, which is great. It was kind of refreshing. It's not that like oh, I don't want to see Wolverine again. It's like no, just use him. And I'm sure they're gonna have episodes. They might have a Wolverine focus episode in the future, but. How they used him in this season I thought was great. Cal Dodd returns to, to voice him, and I think he does an amazing job. They bring back as many of the original voice actors as they can and have them play their same role. Some case, some people had passed away, so they can't. Like David Hemblin, who was the voice of Magneto, he, he obviously couldn't return some other people as well. But, but even then, if, even, if they got a, even if they weren't able to get like, the original voice actor voice a certain character, then they had them voice like, another character, which I thought was just, that's just I don't know, I, just, that really, that, that I think is really cool. I'm like, that show, it's classy. It's fucking classy. That's what it is. Uh, episode one, here we go. I know. We're getting, <laughs> don't worry. We'll move on uh, to the uh, couple more. To me, my X-Men. He left everything to Magneto. Uh, I love how the show starts with a lot of Cyclops. Like, please, guys, I swear. He's cool. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, no, I loved how they handled Cyclops this season as well. You're 100% correct. I feel like, you know, I talked about this during my review, my regular spoiler, my regular review, non-spoiler review. Um, Cyclops in adaptations, I think, outside of maybe X-Men Evolution, um, he's usually always shown to be just a dick or a dweeb or a pushover, and I really dislike that. I feel like a lot of that started with the, um, the X-Men movies. And it's not Marsden's fault. It's not his fault. I don't blame him. I blame the writing. I blame Fox. I blame Brian Singer. I blame a lot of these people. And they just didn't know how to use that character. And it's frustrating because... Scott is like they should have how they should write Scott is how they 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 wrote uh, Chris Evans as Captain America in the MCU. That's what Scott should be written as. And this show like was doing that. And he gets into a whole lot of it. It shows off how cool he is, how powerful he is. No doubt about that. But then they they have these wholesome moments. They have these a lot of dramatic soap opera moments with him and Gene and other Gene (laughs) where I'll, I'll talk about in just a bit. But I loved how they handled Scott. It was it was great. Uh, uh, the idea of Magneto Stethley uh, sneaking in to set up that scene. It's so fun. He did that on purpose. A straight guy, the first time I said, Magneto can get him. Magneto's hot. Oh, my God. The way they show off Magneto in that one episode where he's chained up by Bastion and everything. It's like, you know what they were doing that Speedo? Anyone that says that this show, like, oh, it's, they took away, like, Rogue's dump truck ass. By the way, she's got a big old dump truck. Don't you worry. You got to watch the last episode. So they brought it back. But, like, there's a lot of, um, we'll talk about it in just a bit, but there's a lot of scenes where they show off how sexy and curvy and beautiful the X-Men look. You know, it's showing he's horny. This show is very horny. It's a very horny show. These fucking humans. <laughs> Humanity was testing his patience. They really were. They really were. They you know, witness and survive two genocides. And he's a little pissed. Yeah, he's a little pissed off. He's like, Magneto was right. Magneto was right. That's what they say throughout this entire show. If I can reform, so can humanity. Magneto, yep. Magneto has and will always be right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, between this, Invincible Superman, Moon Girl, or even Goober, I mean, Superhero Series. Uh, truly, I was really impressed how they handled Magneto. I was really happy to see him move away from being the heel to actually being a hero. Yeah, and then possibly going back. I think he's learned from this whole experience. No, he absolutely has. Absolutely has. I fully, I fully agree. I fully agree. It feels like Fox is always insecure about Cyclops 2000. They really were. I never understood it. Blame Brian Singer for a lot of things. Uh, we can fight about this, but the finale was kind of aggravating. Oh, shit, I love the finale, but we'll get to that in just a bit. Again, they got me to care about Scott Summers, and, uh, and like him is, uh, and like him is 10 out of 10, yep, 
Yeah, yeah, mommy Madeline. Actually, that's that's a good way to that's a good way uh good thing to bounce uh bounce to next. So, so one of the big um uh, initial like subplots in in the first couple episodes, the fact that you know Jean and and Scott are obviously uh, married and they've been together for quite some time, and she's pregnant, and she's heavily pregnant. And um, by episode two, she gives birth to Nathan Summers, who we all know becomes uh, Cable uh, in the in the future. Well, that episode ends with uh, another Jean Grey showing up to the X Mansion. Was like, what the hell? Turns out that the uh, Jean that Scott's been with and who is who was heavily pregnant uh, with their with their son is not actually Jean, but is a clone created by Mister Sinister. And uh, so much of episode three focuses on this new Jean, who later takes on the name Madeline Pryor, who also uh, uses the, the 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 title of Goblin Queen uh, to just fuck with the X Men because she doesn't know who who she is, you know, at this point. Mister Sinister, Mister Sinister, who is just I like Magneto. Magneto's looked at as like the greatest villain of the X Men. Like, but, you know, but he's been a hero. I mean, we see that in this episode. But he's not, like, evil like Mr. Mr. Sinister is a fucking asshole. Mr. Sinister's whole thing, I just want to create a super, the, the best superhuman imaginable, and I will dissect, eviscerate, put babies into baby cauldrons and cook them just so he can do what he wants to do. He's a bitch. You know, throughout the, throughout the original series and, and this season as well, all right? So he's behind a lot of horrific things. Both to Jean Grey, Madeline Pryor, Morth, of course, who's still dealing with the trauma of being experimented on by by Mr. Sinister. But he did this to th- this version of Jean. And what I love how I love that the show never once like and, he, and Mr. Sinister teases both. He teases and tortures Jean and Madeline with with like, oh, when did I get you? Was it before you became the Phoenix? After you became the Phoenix? Was it after this thing or that moment? And we don't know. And I'm glad they never said. And I hope they never do. I hope they never say. Uh, when wh- where he where he kidnapped the original gene and replaced it with Madeline because I rather not know I rather not know I think it's fun to speculate fun to theorize and all that but never say w- when he did it, um, but uh, that whole episode was just cu- uh, just really cool and visually stunning but and again this this was like the I mean even before then you had all those sexy moments with uh, Gambit and everyone looking great like across the board from Storm everyone everyone's just sexy as hell but what they do with like Madeline how just gorgeous she looks in her outfit which you know you have the her original outfit in the comics and honestly it's a little too overdone it's like it's barely like any like clothing covering her but they made it better they made her outfit even sexier and it shows off her curves and everything and that got that top and i use it in all my shorts you've seen it she does that yeah and all that she looks great all right and i i really love what they do with madeline Pryor. so tragic what happens to her her character and this leads into the next thing during the genocide of genosha this is the episode that i feel like was the the turning point where people are, who may not have been feeling the show at this point i was already loving the show you know i was loving stuff when we had like the whole homage to the x men arcade games with jubilee and and roberto going inside it because mojo kidnapped them I thought that was so cool, and they had to break out of the the X Men video. It was it was in, in Motendo playing the Motendo. That was so fun and everything. And Jubilee and Roberto, she's like, "Let's fuck, let's do it." It's like, okay, everyone's fucking, everyone's fucking in that mansion. Like people forget how the X Men's. Yeah, we fight you know super villains and stuff. We go on crazy cosmic adventures, but that's like a house full of a bunch of pretty people who are just all gonna fuck each other. And everyone's getting something this season. Shit, like everybody's trying. They're either getting it or they're trying to get it, right? And, you know, good for good for Jubilee. Good for Jubilee. She deserves it. And Roberto, he was in a rough spot. You know, what they do with Jubilee is very fun. Wonderful how they handled her character this season. But, but... Uh, but then, you know, the, the you know, bouncing off of the whole Madeline Pryor thing, you know, she goes to Genosha, which has now become a new country. It's been recognized as the UN, recognized by the UN and so many other nations. And and you have all these huge mutant leaders and major powers trying to make this all work. You have so many mutants from all across the world, you know, from the United States, all these various other countries just going there. It's like, yes, this is a place where we can finally be ourselves and be accepted and loved and, and to start families and start making kids and all that, right? It's great. And you have the, the powers that be, including people like, you know, uh, Sebastian Shaw and, and Emma Frost, uh, the Morlocks. You have a lot of people there that are like, okay, we want a leadership. We need like a, a figure. We need like a figure, you know, to, to be our leader, to be our president. They want Magneto. They want Magneto. And, and they've offered him, you know, that position, which he's considering. 
at this point. And he's also this time in a relationship with Rogue, and she's still involved in drama. Like, because you know, the reason why she's so connecting with with Magneto, because he can physically touch her without having to like to like put like a collar on someone uh, to take you know to take her powers away. And with Gambit, it's you know it's it's you know who she's been an on and off again relationship with, and it's been complicated. And he has these feelings for her. It's again, it's I love when X Men gets messy with the relationship stuff. That's some of the, the soap opera of it all. It's great, but. This is all window dressing to just what happens in this episode, which is the genocide in Genosha, where we see the, the wild sentinel. I think it's, that's how they refer to it as the wild sentinel, this giant bug-like, you know, tri-headed sentinel that starts decimating the entire island nation, kills a lot of people, kills thousands, tens of thousands of, of, of mutants within an instant, launches other sentinels who start killing men, women. You see these giant statues of Professor Xavier and Magneto just fucking crush me like, ah! It's like, just smush him. And it's it's like, oh my God! I like, and then the music is playing, it's sweeping, it's... It's like, it's horrifying, right? And then... Uh, like, you know, Madeline gets killed, a lot of mutant, a lot of char side characters get, get wiped out completely, B Banshee dies, um, and, and Magneto's covering debris, he fucking is just having flashbacks of the Holocaust, and he's seeing all this, he's like, not again, never again, and he's throwing trains and shit at the Wyatt Sentinel, like, using it as a whip and stuff. Um, and then, and then we get to, and then Gambit and Rogue, they're doing their thing, trying to save as many people as they possibly can, but the Morlocks, they're all trapped in the docks, it's like, it's just a mess. But then my favorite moment in that episode, uh, it's actually two favorite moments, obviously, is when the Wild Sentinel is targeting the Morlocks. Magneto g rushes in there, creates his, like, um, you know, uh, force field around them, try to repulse the blast. And he has, and he has all these people holding around him. He's holding this boy who he saved earlier in the season, Leech, Leech of the Morlocks, right? And he's just looking, Leech is like looking up to him and Magneto looks down at him and he, and he says, and it's, it's like, he can't, he can't maintain the shield anymore. And, and Magneto says in his native language, don't be afraid. And then, and then Leech is just, he's just, he, as Magneto says later on, he, he says, I watched a child's eyes burn inside of his skull and he disintegrated and he died. And, and I was just like, ah, ah, it was like when that happened, I thought that was beautiful. That's when I really, I started crying then. When I first watched the episode, I started crying. I thought, I thought, they just killed Magneto. I thought, I thought he was like dead, but they killed, they killed the rest of the, the Morlocks. They're all dead. And that causes Roke to fucking snap and she's crying and she rushes at the, the wild sentinel. And Gambit's like, thing's gonna kill you. And then he blasts her out of the air with his motorcycle. And then he's like, I'm gonna take this goddamn thing down. The cards have always been on my side. Ah! And speaking of your side, this thing has impaled him through his torso and is like holding him up like this. And he's like, Wah! and he's like choking on his own blood. And he just looks that fucking wild sentinel eye and he, he touches it. The whole thing starts to glow. He's turned into a giant bomb and is like, my name is Gambit. Remember it. Boom! And he blows that thing up, but he dies. He dies in the process. And uh, it ends with Rogue holding his body saying, I can't feel you. I can't feel you. And I was like, holy shit. And I was like, that that when it when they did that, it was like, all right, this is something. This is something else. This is something I didn't expect them to do. And I think that was everybody. It was it was it was such an amazing moment. It was just such a horrific and beautiful moment. I was like, all right, well, this changes everything. At that point, then everyone's like, this is must see television. And at this I was already enjoying it beforehand, but this was like this changed everything. So take a moment to talk to you guys about the genocide in Genosha, the, and and the the death of Magneto and the death of Gambit. Oh Lord, man, yeah, I love Mojo. Mojo was so good. Yeah, and they brought in Allison Court to, to voice uh, Older Jubilee, which I thought was really cool. Yep. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, don't be afraid. I thought, oh, get me up in that episode on OMG. Uh, goddamn, don't be afraid. It was, dev it was so devastating. Yeah, at least got melted. He got disintegrated. No, Leech ain't come back. Leech ain't come back. <laughs> Those Morlocks, they love killing the fucking Morlocks in X-Men comics. They ain't come back. <laughs> I can't feel it. Remember, remember it. Yeah. I just stared at soon after Gambit died. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I tell, I tell you, you watch my odd view commentary, you see me cry in chat. I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, mm. oh, my name is Gambit. Remember it. Yeah, such an amazing moment. Sure, guy, I can't feel it. Yeah, the voice actor nailed Roger's emotion. Yep. 
much as I love Magneto and Nightcrawler, are probably my favorite character in the season for being able to uh, for for being able to bring constant reassurance. To the, oh, and we'll talk about Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is also introduced in that fifth episode because um, he's been on Genosha for a while, been setting things up there, and he's great. And yeah, he becomes. I love how they handled Nightcrawler this season. It was beautiful. Like. They leaned into his mischievous nature, of course. Him tri wielding those swords with Wolverine was awesome. Fighting the Prime Sentinels, oh, oh this Bam thing. But then he's also he's a he's he's religious as well. He's a, he's a Catholic. I think he's an ordained priest, and he presides over the the funeral of Gambit. And he says all oh, these. He has these beautiful speeches. Like anytime, like you want someone to make you feel better, Nightcrawler's that guy. He's gonna say something beautiful. He's, as I said, as I talked about Nightcrawler, he's a renaissance man of a mutant. He's well-read, he, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's intellectual, he's funny, um, you know, he's, uh, he's a, a, a religious individual, he's, he's got fucking skills, uh, up the wazoo, and he's just a good friend. And he's sexy too, he's like, he's, he's the ugly X-Man, except he's still sexy as hell. I love that, uh, Nightcrawler in that episode, he was great. I love his introduction, he goes, ha ha, <laughs> when he sees his friends. Yeah, his constant reassurance was great. Ace of Base in that episode, I was like, this song's fucking good. And like Magneto and Rogue are just like, yeah, they're like gyrating and touching. Again, this is a very, people are saying like they took away all the sex appeal of X-Men. It's like, you are not watching this show. You're making a fool out of yourself by saying all this. There is so much sexiness. Storm's ass is like at one point just jiggling and gyrating. Like, goo. It's like, what? It's neat. It's, it's, it's incredible. Genocide of Genosha feels very relevant these days. Exactly. I know. I know. Yep. Nightcrawl is always fantastic. He's a demon and a Catholic. Yeah. He's badass. Uh, expect a uh, demon to be religious, right? X-rated X-Men. I can't feel you. A little reference to WandaVision. Oh, look at that. Good point. Good point. Sad fact, Rogue's VA's niece died a few weeks before. She, oh, she voiced the, Oh, I had no idea. I had no idea. Damn. Yeah, and then she... Yeah, and of course, that's the original voice actress for Rogue as well. But yeah, how they handled the... The, the genocide, I thought, was fantastic. It was so good. Uh, and then the next episode, we learn uh, that Charles Xavier is actually alive. Because I thought, I was like, he didn't actually die. I was like, how are they going to handle this? Because they didn't know. Because he's taken by the Shire Empire. And the queen of the Shire Empire is just like, I fucking love you, Charles. He's like, I love you, too. So they start smooching and all that. And they, you know, they want to make him king. Make him emperor and stuff. But that makes things complicated. And eventually, he's like, he feels the death of Gambit. He knows something bad is going on Earth and mutant kinds at risk. He's like, I got to go home. I know, I know. I want to marry my sexy bird wife, but I got to go home. I got to go. So he has to leave his sexy or would-be bird wife, his sexy bird girlfriend. And we also see just a little, a nice little slice of cosmic Marvel. Like we see Gladiator and stuff. We see Gronin the Accuser, like the Kree and all that. I was like, oh, this is really neat to see all this in, the, in this animation style. Thought that was really cool. But he eventually goes back to Earth. And you know, eventually we're like, okay, well, who's the, behind all this shit? Because that's the big, that's the big um, mystery. It's like, well, it's not Mr. Sinister. I mean, you, you have like, you know, it's not Bulvar Trask. It's not Gyrick. You know, the Sentinels are clearly involved, no doubt about that, and it's revealed that the big bad is Bastion, voiced by Theo James, who does a great job. Now, I'm unfamiliar with Bastion as a character. I have not read the, the books that, that deal with him, um, but Bastion, as we come to learn in these episodes, he is a biomechanical Sentinel. Some people are saying he's a mutant. No, he's a biomechanical Sentinel, where uh, he is pretty much the, the child of Master Mold via Nimrod and then to him, where Nimrod created this basically this techno-organic substance that infects Bastion's father and passes down to the child, and so he is then programmed to, I mean, he's basically programmed. He's a, he's, he's a biomechanical being that can interface with, with, with technology and create advanced technology, but his programming constantly tells him, you got to kill Muty, all right? You, gotta, you have to kill mutants, and he, his whole life, has been leading up to this moment, like all working towards, towards this goal. He's been laying the groundwork probably for years, if not decades, for this. And that's why he's able to cause so much devastation across the board. And what's so cool is, is like, I'm not familiar with this character, but I thought it was a fantastic introduction. He is absolutely insane. He's charismatic. He's creepy. And he's 
fucking dangerous. He's really, really dangerous. It's like, well, and he's a bastard. And he's a bastard too. And he's sassy. He's he's just everything you want in a villain. It's like he's 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 fascinating to to watch when he's talking, and he's so cool doing all these amazing action scenes as well. And he makes the Sentinels just really, really terrifying again. And I just love how he's been around for so long. He's making power plays. He has to interact with all these different villains. I love how you have a whole scene. Or he's breaking down, like, listen, this is how it's gonna fucking happen now. And he has to he has to be in contact with Doctor Doom. He has to be in contact with Baron Zemo. And the, I love how Doctor Doom at one point is not listen, I don't approve of genocide, okay? But you know I, 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 do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> I love that Doom's like, I don't approve of this. But but keep going. <laughs> and Baron Zemo, he's you know, he's like, Yeah, we're not sure about this either. But I love that he has to let all the villains know what he's doing. Because the villains might have like an issue with all this. And I and I love in that moment, it made me really appreciate how they handled Doctor Doom. Because even Doctor Doom's just like, I don't condone genocide, okay? That's a step that is a step too far for Doom even. I thought that was really cool. And yeah, and then he says his answer to Doom is just like, all right, next time I'll send a memo. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. If I, if I was Doom, I'd be like, the fuck did you say to me? How, how dare you speak to Doom in this way? I thought that was wonderful. Uh, and then he's teamed up with Mr. Sinister. Uh, he gets rid of some loose ends like Gyrick and, you know, implants Bolivar Trask. And that's this whole thing. He creates Prime Sentinels, which are these biomechanical beings. So he gets all these people like the Friends Humani, which is a human terrorist organization that hates muties, basically. They're like, they're white, basically like white supremacists. And um, he's, he implants them. Uh, even though they willfully at first like, yeah, fucking implant us of shit, but he erases their, their minds and they're basically sleeper agents and he's able to activate them via his base in, in South America, uh, the coast of America. And so he has all these sleeper agents around the world, thousands of now tens of thousands of people that are his army that just start attacking the X-Men, begin rounding, like killing or capturing as many people as he possibly can because his end goal is like, I want to create a planet that is free from mutant kind. Okay, because that's what his programming constantly tells him. It's like, this needs to happen. And he's making all these horrific Cronenberg monstrosities to do it. He turned, like, Bolvar Trask into one after Rogue. I'm like, fucking kill that guy. Fuck that guy, you know? Uh, love how they deal with Bash and how he just suffocates Gyrick, just like, fuck you. I love how he, like, he, like, puts his glasses on, on, on his face. He's like, just so, so you can see me. And then, just starts suffocating him. I was like, oh. What a bastard, and how he, like, they handle him later on in the last episode of his, his, he becomes even more grotesque looking, and using all the advanced technology he gets from Cable and stuff, he rips fucking Cable's arm, he, like, beats the shit out of Cable with his own arm, he's just like, fuck you, Cable, and then he gets that super suit of his, holy shit, but, um, but Bastion is such an amazing villain, I was very impressed with this character, very, very impressed. Oh, let's see. Here's Ghetto. Yeah, that's what they call it. They actually, you're right, human to black human. Uh, I forget the one of the Shire. I think it's the sister of his would-be wife says, you're Milky Way Ghetto. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Bash, such a bastard. They gave him an image Charles had major for Jennifer season. We'll get to that in just a bit. You're right. Chat GPT, man. He makes, he makes him look like a chump. Yeah, Mr. Sinister like, works for him, basically. Next time I'll send a memo. It's kind of implied that he's a mutant uh, human uh, sentinel hybrid. Because they say, like, because at one point they, like, Charles did go to him and his mother, his mother said, no, 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 no. So maybe he did have that innate mutant ability anyway, but then it's the sentinel programming and everything. It just fucked with it. Don't mistake Doom's collusion with approval of genocide. Exactly. It's like, Doom, you fucking were in on this. Yeah, Doom, should he should have ended the call. He should have killed him. Oh, Lord. The Doom and Zemo cameos got me hyped when I saw them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Rogue drops him. Such a great moment. She's like, fuck him. He killed my man. Bastion is that Eric Andre meme of his mom. How could the X-Men do this to my mom? <laughs> yeah, because he implants his own. As soon as I saw his mom, as soon as I was like, ah, she's, she's, this, is, that's, this isn't good. <laughs> Something's wrong with her. And then she starts popping, locking. I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, I love how they, people transform. It's their bodies, like, breaking apart. It's like, oh, oh, to make room for the sentinel parts to come out. Like, their jet boots and stuff and their repulsors because it's literally that technology activating, and it has to change their anatomy. It's like, oh, my God. How are you going to get that shit out of them? Oh, man. He made Cable into a Buzz Lightyear. He did, he did make him a Buzz Lightyear. I love that. I love that. He could have just ripped the arm off and then transferred. He's like, no, no, no. I'm going to beat the shit out of you with the arm first. Like, hits him multiple times across the face with his arm. I was like, oh, my God. 
Oh, my lord. Uh, question was, the UN lady Bastion's mom? No, 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 no. Different characters. Although she was in league with him, too. Like, all these people that you thought were the X-Men, I was like, nope, they were, they were in league with, um, with Bastion. And it was, and that's why, you know, she eventually frees Magneto, who is just like, and this actually goes to the next point here. Because Magneto is then set free, because, you know, he we revealed that he didn't die, he's been captured by Bastion, because Bastion knows how dangerous he is. And then the UN lady, who's actually voiced by the original voice actress for Jean Grey, um, she, uh, uh, releases him, and, and, um, he then's, like, enough. He goes to the North Pole, and he activates his, uh, like, basically magnetic gravity field, and he shuts off, he just makes, he basically becomes an EMP, and he shuts off all electricity, all technology across the planet just to create, like, a new dark age at that point. It's like, holy shit. And uh, we also, at this point, well, I guess I'll get to this at the end, but we see a lot of other Marvel uh, hero character and villain character reactions like, the fucking power went out, what the hell? I'm sure Doom didn't approve of that. Doom's like, fuck, probably very upset about that. But we see a lot of characters' reactions to this. And then eventually this all leads to Magneto going like, nah, fuck this. No, fuck it. I'm, I'm you know, you know I, I try to be nice. I try to be nice. I tried to be nice, but I'm not doing it. So he gets Asteroid M out of the water. Beautiful. Love how they handled Asteroid M. And then he makes his appeal to the X-Men, Rogue, and, uh, and uh, Roberto, Sunspot. They, they join him, you know, at this point. And uh, now the X-Men have to split into two different teams. You have, I think, what, gold team and blue team. I forget which one. But basically two different teams, Team A, Team B. One team has to basically force Magneto to turn all the power back on across the planet. And then the other team needs to stop, you know, Bastion and Sentinels from committing, you know, genocide across the planet. And how all that is handled in the, in the last two episodes, I think is absolutely brilliant. The animation, the fight sequences are glorious. Um, um, I mean, when we get to episode uh, 10, I love how they handle Sinister. They like where eventually the uh, Gene is able to control the Phoenix Force now. She's able to harness it. And she's like, I can bring it out anytime I want. And and because she's just, you know, she's just gotten better. And she literally, she temporarily um, um, defeats Bastion for a bit, or he's weakened. And she just gets a hold of Sinister, and she does something I think we've all wanted to see happen to Sinister. She just grabs him and just starts pulling all the DNA that he's that he's imbued himself with, all these different parts that that have made him this Frankenstein abomination for all these years, all the all these centuries. Rips that shit out until he's just this gross, decrepit looking, just uh, uh, old man who's just all malformed and shit. He's like, oh, 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 show me my face, show me my face, and morph. I love that morph. Morph is the one is like you look the same to me, and he's like, oh, <laughs> he has like a little, he has like a total cry, which is very funny. I missed it the first time I watched it, but I was like, for my um, for my shorts, I went back and I watched it again. He has the oh, <laughs> as he runs away, and I'm like, and yeah, fuck you, Mister Sinister. That was so great. I thought it was great for also Gene to do it because he obviously kidnapped her at one point, made Madeline and all that. So she got revenge on him, but also Morph was able to mock him too. I was like, fuck yeah. But, um, but things are, oh, and then of course, the episode before, I, I haven't mentioned Wolverine a lot. Like Wolverine, again, he's not been, a, he's, he's a supporting character in this show. He's not the main lead, which I think is great. But they do a lot of great stuff with Wolverine here, especially the action sequences. Like for so long, like Wolverine's never been able to stab anybody, you know? And, and like obviously in the show, it's always been, all right, he, he'll snick his claws out. He's like, now I, uh, now I mean business. And then he would just go and kick the guy, right? Now he's stabbing folks. He's stabbing so many people. And he ends up, he fights a lot of like Prime Sentinels cutting their heads off and stuff. But at this point, like how it's all playing out, like Magneto is too powerful. The X-Men are losing to him at this point. He's going to kill like probably them and or, or at least, you know, they need to they need to weaken him. And Wolverine's like, fuck it, I'll kill him. And he stabs him. Fucking Wolverine goes, and, and just, man, he was like, oh, oh. <laughs> he was like, wait for a long time to do this, bub. It was like, whoa, my God. And he, but it doesn't kill Magneto, even though Magneto's like, I'm bleeding out, man. <laughs> I'm fucking bleeding out. He then looks at Wolverine, he's like, you. <laughs> and he rips the animantium from his skeleton. He sucks it out. He's like, ah, Magneto. Wolverine's just popping and locking. He's like, all of his bones are breaking. 
as the animantium is pulled from his body, and he's just a crumpled mess. It's like, holy shit, really like that iconic image. But then all this leads to then Charles going like, fuck it, I gotta break his mind. And then they end up being trapped in each other's minds. So the last episode is everything's going to shit. Bashing attacks asteroid M at this point. He's like, fuck it, I'm gonna just destroy the planet. I'm gonna, we're gonna start over. That's how we're gonna do it. Humanity will prevail, but I gotta just make, I gotta wipe out as many people as I possibly can, bring the entire asteroid down. And you have these wonderful fight sequences with all the mutants up there trying to stop him. And then you, and then you get all these, uh, eventually all these cameos, like uh, all these heroes trying to stop the chaos, trying to fight off the prime sentinels. Um, you know, you see, you know, Captain America and Iron Man, um, uh, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Mary Jane, which it reveals that Peter Parker was able to find Mary Jane, you know, from the original season. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda's under attack. Doctor Strange is performing surgery at hospitals because they don't have any technology to keep the lights on, so he's using magic. I was like, how they're handling Daredevil? Daredevil's trying to stop looters and all these people that are like pillaging and fucking raping people. I was like, stop doing that! And he has to teams up with Cloak and Dagger. It's like, whoa, it's it's so cool. Flash Thompson's in it as well. Flash Thompson's a cameo. Um, all that's great. And eventually, the United States is like, shit, let's activate the Magneto Protocols. It's like, let's just shoot missiles at the uh, asteroid. But with that cause, what it doesn't destroy it. It causes it to fall out of orbit. And uh, Bastion seemingly ends up dying in the, in, the, in the nuclear blast or the blast in the missile. He's like, ah, it gets fucked up. And then the, the asteroid's heading down, but Charles and Magneto are finally able to reconcile with each other. And it's like, okay, fine. And so then Magneto's like, Magneto lives! And he stops the asteroid from crashing, and he lifts it back up, and then, boop, it vanishes. And it's like, what the fuck just happened? And then you have some of the X-Men that are separated, like uh, Sunspot and Jubilee and uh, Forge and some of the other ones. They're on, they're on like Earth, and they're like, what the fuck? And then we get to the big kind of like setup for season two, which is it's going to be a past, present, and, and future storyline. Some of our characters are, three, like, are in the past 3,000 years ago in ancient Egypt where they run into En Saba Nur, a young apocalypse. And, and then in the, in the future storyline, we have Gene, we have Scott, and they run into like a teenage version of, of Cable, of Nathan Summers, their, their, their son. And then the present day storyline, we cut to Genosha, which is just now, again, it's the site of the genocide. It's been, it's, it's like seemingly abandoned. And we see this figure, you know, pick, uh, like pick up this, this handful of dirt and he finds Gambit's card. And his, his last thing is, the last thing he says is, you know, his big giant blue hand. He's like, ah, oh, I see only death. And it's Apocalypse, and he's going to turn Gambit into one of his horsemen. Death. And it's like, oh, my God, it's so freaking cool. It's so cool. And, uh, yeah, I just love this, Bruce. I was right predicting this. <laughs> Did you predict this with the with the Apocalypse and everything? It's great setup. The thing is, like, I'm not even a big Apocalypse fan, but I'm actually interested to see how they're going to provide him with depth. And if they're going to, like, team up with him in the past, but then you also have present Apocalypse as being a dick, and you got future Apocalypse, it's going to be, like, really cool. I, I'm really interested to see how they're going to handle this, like, this trifecta of storylines happening in different time periods. I think, and they're all eventually going to meet up. But, yeah, I, I just, I'm just so impressed with this. And... And that's why I do think they're going to do, well, obviously we know they're doing season two and season three, no doubt. I think they're going to bring back some, I think they're going to create new, I think they're going to create, they're going to do to Marvel what, what DC and Bruce Timm and Paul Dini and Boyd Kirkland, all those amazing people that they do with Batman series, which led to the birth of the DCAU. They have an opportunity now to create the Marvel equivalent of the DCAU. They have the opportunity to do X-Men the Animated Series, obviously continue that on, bring back Spider-Man the Animated Series. I know they have another Spider-Man project, I want to see that too, but fucking do that, okay? Do Spider-Man 98, whatever you want to call it. Do, do the Avengers now, do Captain America, they originally wanted to do a Captain America Animated Series back in the day. You can do that now, they established Cap, he, he has lines, he's not like a silent cameo, he's, he interacts with Rogue at one point, Rogue's pissed off. Do this, because um, there's a void right now in, in terms of a big... Uh, uh, like superhero centric, like animated universe, and I feel like Marvel can finally do that now, thanks to this show, because it's just in the pop culture zeitgeist, and so many people are loving it, and that's what I would love. 
But that's my spoiler review. That's my spoiler review of this. I think it's great. There's so much more I could possibly cover. I'm going to read some more comments in just a bit. But yeah, it, it was... It was amazing. It was an um, it's an amazing show. I was I again I can't believe how good it was. Can't believe it. Oh man. Uh, let's see here. Wolverine, name, you know, been a lot of wars, Bob. The brave always die first. Amazing, yeah, amazing quote. The Magneto said in the original series, the X Men is the uh, is a few away and stay in the expansion. Yeah, yeah. Hi, now you brownie. Hi, hope you're doing well. Talking X Men. Mentioned a current time, but you were high. I probably didn't remember. <laughs> I think that's true. You were right, Edgy. You you nailed it. You you are a hundred percent correct. That's exactly what's gonna happen, which is great. Which is yeah, right from the comics. Yep. Oscar Isaac's time to shine. <laughs> oh man, yeah, they, they ugh, oof, rough movie. Can't wait. Brought back his dad. Yeah, be brought back his death. Scott and Jean's goodbye. Oh, that's another good moment. I should have mentioned. Uh, yeah, that is a beautiful moment. Scott and Jean's goodbye to kill made me cry. The day you were born, your mother told me you had my eyes, and now they're 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 yours. I love you, son. That was a hundred hundred percent a great moment. Wonderful, beautiful moment. So so adorable. Box was, was always joyously over the top and X Men. Yeah, we're gonna. I think we're gonna see different versions of them now. In the comics, Wolverine gets a skeleton back by becoming a horseman as well. Ooh, look at that. I wonder if they'll do that. Interesting to see where they'll take it, Biggie Smith. Clown Freaks, uh, they do have multiple verse, uh, multi, they do have multiverse, so Age of Apocalypse, perhaps, perhaps. I cried so much too, OMG. I thought, uh, I think we'll see Wolverine go on Claw about in season two or three. Yeah, no, I think he'll, he'll have the Bone Claws for a while. And he'll get the Animantium back eventually. Oscar, Oscar was done, he was done. I don't blame him for that. I don't blame Oscar Isaac for that. It's just, that whole fucking movie just sucks. Apocalypse sucks. Um, the, the movie that is. Was there an apocalypse who's screaming every line? Charles, protect your weakling. <laughs> I have ideas about season two. We're going to get Feral Wolverine and Gene and Cyclops going to tell Cable about the X-Men. They're the ones who told Cable. Oh, that'd be really cool. Captures a lot of that human guilt when the Sarah blew up the ass. He really did. He's like, oh. <laughs> he even said, sir. I love it. It's President, President Kelly, which I think President Robert Kelly was Senator Kelly from the, obviously, the, the, the comics and the animated series. Uh, the, the original season or series, I should say. And I love that Cap's like, sir, I really, and they got, to, and it's interesting. Th this also provides a, with like greater context of, of this version of, of, of this Marvel universe in particular. T'Chaka is still king and he's still Black Panther, which is very interesting because Steve says King T'Challa. He doesn't say T'Challa. It's like, oh, I thought it was T'Challa because we go to Wakanda for a bit. He says, I no King T'Challa because King T'Chaka is like, don't fucking do it, dude. <laughs> And 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 uh, uh, Steve is like King T'Chaka is right, sir. We don't know exactly what what's on asteroid M. We've never known. We, it, it could be you could make this worse. And person's like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like what he told me not to do. I'm gonna do it now. Oh man, why do they keep sending metal men to fight the metal bender? That's a great point, Dutch. Yeah, I was like, oh, Logan, you gotta be careful, buddy. Oh man, yeah, you got that fucking you know Magneto's like, all right, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. <laughs> Um, I think we'll see the Wolverine's the Horseman of War. Yeah, maybe, maybe that Apocalypse train. Maybe he'll be his first Horseman of War, right? I kind of want them to bring back Spectacular Spider-Man, but we got that freshman year show they're doing. Yeah, it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want them. I want that too. The Fancy Dome they saw in the past probably Ramatut Kane in the lady they saw in the future. Whoa, Kane, that'd be cool. Is the woman who raised Cable, right? Apocalypse, do you like jazz? I'm just glad it wasn't a chloroform note. Was the <laughs> okay, now he's like whatever. So I'm saying annoyed with how the X-Men keep turning their backs so the villain can recover and be a bigger man as later. <laughs> well, Bastion's dead. I think Bastion is, he's like, ah, fuck it. Getting got. For now. Or maybe we'll see Bastion. You think we'll see Bone Claws Wolverine? 100%. Will Dad become a horseman? Uh, I, I just assume Bone Claws, but people are saying, like, horsemen, sure. I think he'll be the horseman in the past. I think that'd be kind of cool. Glad to have gone back to the status quo where the X-Men are A-listers and the Avengers are fucking useless. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's just like, because people forget, like, that was before, like, anyone, like, I mean, the Avengers of Comics were a thing, but they were not the premier Marvel team. It was X-Men for years, for decades. That was the team. Like, the most popular comics from Marvel for, for years were Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk, and the X-Men. And so, yeah, it was kind of, I don't think the Avengers are even a thing. I think they're, I, I'm, I, you know, maybe we saw Iron Man and Cap there, but I wonder if they're even, uh, like, this, this would be great because at this point, 
this would be a great jumping off point if they want to do a, an Avengers 97, Avengers 98 series where where it's like, wow, we were really unprepared for the Prime Sentinel and Bastion shit. We need to put together a team. And now that the X-Men, now that the X-Men are gone, now that the X-Men like have been divided across time. You need another team in there to fill the void. So this is an opening to do an Avengers show. So you can so maybe if you hey, if you don't do Spider-Man, like because they have that other Spider-Man project, you can still have Spider-Man be a part of that team. You can have it be Captain America and Iron Man and Spider-Man and all these other characters that you've already kind of showed. So, which then you can also have like a Spider-Man centric episodes as in the Avengers. So you could do it that way if they don't want to have like two two Spider-Man shows on at the same time. That's what that that's what I would do. But yeah, that would be cool. Regular other Disney Plus shows, probably my, my favorite uh, or second favorite between it and Loki. Yeah, same, 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 same. Rogue's Rampage uh, post Gambit's death was great. Yeah, all the animation, all the sequences were made. The fight sequences were cool. He made him at Moon Knight than Apocalypse. Yeah, series itself. But he was a better Moon Knight. Where the showrunners were told that Deadpool was off limits for X-Men 97, do you think they'll bring him in for season two or three? Ooh. Oh, they told Deadpool was off limits, so they probably want to bring him in. Um... I think, I wonder if it's because of the movie. I, I guess that's the only reason as to why. I think they should. I think 100% they should. I think that'd be cool. Deadpool technically is in the animated series. He's never voiced. We only see him, we see him twice. One time when Morph transforms in him to, like, to torment Wolverine. Another time where Charles Xavier reads Sabretooth's match. I actually did a short on this. Uh, I think they should, 100%. Especially fill the void in that present day uh, timeline. Have Deadpool in there, either as a villain or as a hero. That'd be interesting. I think that'd be really cool. Appears the time event happened because Bastion absorbed Cable's time travel attack when they... Oh, is that is that what happened? Oh, I never thought of it that way. The Avengers work for the government, so it makes sense. Yeah, maybe then at that point they're like, we can't work for the government anymore. We gotta go, we gotta go AWOL. I think we'll see the characters of Secret Wars played by the same actors in the movie like What If, or is it just more standalone? What do you mean? Do you think we'll see these characters in Secret Wars played by the same actors in the movie like... Oh, you think, you, you think like the anime? I don't think so i mean i know this is like everything technically is in the mcu like every marvel movie ever made at this point is the mcu because the multiverse but maybe referenced maybe the i think that'll be kind of fun if they go to like an animated universe at one point as like a, oh look at this you know and it's the and it, it is the the 90s anime like x-men stuff i think that'd be cool but are you saying like the voice actors playing them live action i doubt that i doubt it but who knows fuck you know man you fucked up logan oh what <laughs> <laughs> Naya. Naya. Uh, Animanti was actually the thing that kept Wolverine's feral mutant powers at bay. Now that there's no Animantium for his healing factor to fight against, he's stronger than even Magneto has no idea. Where oh, I didn't know that. It's not really shown in any of the movies. Um, Avengers really didn't do shit in there. Well, I mean, technically, the, I don't think the Avengers are even a team. I think Cap and Iron Man were there, but um, I don't. I, 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 I could be wrong, but I, I don't get the sense that that team is a thing at this point. Um, I don't think they exist yet. I think now they will. I think now you have an opportunity to make them exist. I'm going to see how season two is going to turn out the career getting fired for apparently being able to work with or having only fans. Well, um, like season two is done. Season two is done now. They've even confirmed, like the voice actors have said they've done all their lines or most of them have finished their work. So season two is pretty much in the bag at this point. So, because they work out a lot of this stuff ahead of time, and they already, you know, season three, I mean, you know, I don't know how far, like, ahead they are, but season two, as far as I know, is done. And I follow a number of the voice actors on social media, and they were talking about how, yeah, I finished my lines. It looks it's really good. They said it's, like, the most they've ever, like, done for a job before, which is pretty significant. I do wonder if they're going into the new mutants of generation. I think that'd be cool. I mean, technically, you know, Sunspot, he's one of the first new mutants. So they could do that, like for that present, because in that present day timeline, they could establish a new team. It could be the New Mutants or Generation X, because it's Forge. Forge is there. Bastion, Bastion comes back. People are asking about, or not Bastion, excuse me, Bishop. Like it's uh, in in the present. It's it's Forge. It's Bishop. It's Jubilee. It's Sunspot. So yeah, they can form the New Mutants or something or some equivalent of that, and they can get some new characters in. Um, they can get like, you know, I mean, anybody for both the, the classic new mutants, but also other characters that they want to, they can get, you know, that we see at one point Scarlet Witch, but she's it said she's off world, you know, Quicksilver, like there's things they can do, you know, it'd be really cool. But yeah, I think they recruit all those people. Um, yeah, Avengers were definitely second string, uh, before the MC. Yep. hundred percent. 
Think Sun Spun Jubilee are going to be a crate generation X or the X-Men next class. I think so. I think that's what they're going to do. They finally went all out with Morth and made him super. Yeah, they, they did. They really did. I, I loved how they kind of had little cameos because he transforms in the, into the Hulk. He transforms into Mr. Fantastic. He, um, there were so many, so many things that he transformed into, which was really cool. Are the Fantastic Four off in space? Good question. We, don't, we only see Mr. Fantastic at one point, but it's Morph. Rogue punching the shit out of Bash and doing a JoJo part five. So, yeah, all the action scenes for Rogue were amazing. Like, this is the best that, like, Rogue was always cool in the original animated series, no doubt. But here, it's like how they showcase all of her abilities and things and how powerful. She's so fucking powerful. And she just, I mean, post-episode five, it's just, I mean, in episode five, but also post-episode five, it's like, Jesus fucking, I do not want to fuck with her. You know, at all. At all. Well, put on new glasses. Spider-Man was never an actual Avenger, just a came. I, I know. But I'm, I'm saying for this particular, like, new iteration, it's like if we're going to do an Avenger show, I would obviously put Spider-Man in there. I think that's a no-brainer. No brainer. Plus, plus he became a permanent member of the of the Avengers with like new Avengers, like Brian Michael Bendis. So that's what I would do. If like, in, it would it would solve the issue of okay, if we can't do a Spider Man ninety series like reboot, then or you know sequel series, just ha put him in the Avengers, make him a make him a uh, supporting character, and make him one of the main leads. That's what I would do. Um, there's not need to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if they could become something more white 97. Yeah, they have to use they have to use white Nick Fury unless they use it like his son. They could use his son if they wanted to. He was a uh, black, but yeah, it'd be funny. I'd love a future Wolverine centric episode where Deadpool could pop in. I think they they'll, they'll do one. They'll do one. So what do you think? Does Morph actually love Wolverine? A lot of people weren't asking that. A lot of people like read that last scene where he transforms into Jean Grey because uh, saying that he just said that because he wanted to confess his feeling to Wolverine. I think he did in that moment, and people probably are free to disagree, free to disagree with me. I read it more as like he just he did that for Wolverine because Wolverine's like dying, and um, like Wolverine obviously loves Jean Grey. He still loves her, and they they lean into that. Like there, again, there's some soap opera shit earlier in the season that is very very uh, uh, just funny and unexpected that whole twist where you think scott was talking to gene the whole time but he's actually cheating on her with madeline and it's like whoa and gene's like what the fuck is going on he's like uh gene uh which is so great and he's like that's what we do scott we do the mind thing well i was doing it with her she's the mother of my child gene what and then uh there's been fucking they've been mind fucking but then you have the whole scene where gene's mad at scott and she just starts you making out with Wolverine and Wolver and I love that Wolverine like he just wants Gene so bad. There was like even earlier on he's like hold on Genie hold on he's like holding her and everything. He's like you just look at look at Wolverine look at me. <laughs> Logan take it easy. But then she starts she just th she just throws herself at uh, at Wolverine because she's mad at Scott. She throws herself at him. She's like I don't need Scott I have you and she starts making out with him and Wolverine even tells her to stop. He's like stop because he's like you don't actually want this and he even knew he even knew I like that. And he looked very disappointed and sad, but he still loves her. Um, and so I read it more as just Morph is telling Wolverine what he wants to hear in that moment because he's dying. But a lot of people are saying, now I think Morph, there are some moments where clearly Morph is in the Wolverine. And I think that they're going to explore that more um, in, the, in this. That would be, that's really fascinating. I'm sure people are, some, you know, some losers are mad about that, but I, I think that's interesting. I'm very curious how old they're going to handle all that relationship. Again, it's the soap opera of it all, which I fucking love. How they're handling it, I think, is great. But I didn't, I didn't uh, read it as more of a, I'm confessing my, unless, you know, they're saying otherwise. You know. Um, I'm going to have the actors from the Fox movies playing these versions in Secret Wars. Oh, 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 you're saying, so you're saying the, the, like, James Marsden is going to play, like, S this version of Cyclops is what you're saying? He he's going to play this version? Oh, I didn't read it that way. Um, I mean, they could do that if they want. I mean, yeah, sure. You know, you know, I, I like this Wolver I don't think like this Wolverine is like the Wolverine from like X-Men 2000 or whatever, you know, but um, I mean, they could they could do it if they wanted to, you know, is it still game if Morph turns into Gene for a bubble? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's like, <laughs> I do wonder. I do wonder. He's gender fluid. He's gender fluid. Um, I can see them having Deadpool table the cable. That's right. He's kind of in a bad place. He's lost his parents again. He lost. That would be really sweet if they do that. They can do the cable Deadpool uh, like comics, which are pretty popular. More of a bestie. So Spot is New Mutant and Jubilee was the leader of Generation X. Maybe a combo for both. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. That sounds pretty good. 
I like that Magneto only focus on Rogue despite his children also being on the boat. Yeah, I know. He doesn't give a fuck about his kids. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My faces are all blacked out. <laughs> uh, did Kevin ever find his shield? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Did, does he have it? Does he even have it in the, in the meaning? I didn't notice it. it. I don't know if it was there. If they bring in Hassoff back to the voice, that would be grab tuning the fuck out. Let's do it. Let's do it. Did he do the voice of uh, Nick Fury in the animated series? It'd be a criminal not to bring back 90 Spider-Man back for... I would love that. I would love them too, but they have that other one. I would do it. I would fucking do it. If I had my way, yes. Let's do Spider-Man 98. Let's do... Because that's the year it went off the air. Spider-Man 98, do an Avengers show. Um, do like another one. I think that'd be really cool. Bring back as many of the original voice actors as possible. Let's fucking go. I know that Christopher Barnes, he wants to voice Spider-Man again. He's really... He's like, can we do this? So I don't know if it's like in any form of production, but I, I wouldn't be shocked they announce it soon. I mean, Scott telling Wolverine not to make Gene cr uh, cry was pretty cool. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hardest sip in the universe. <laughs> Technically, not cheating since she's basically you. <laughs> so I say he should have said that. Morpheus and the Daddy Bears. Hell yeah. Those losers shouldn't be too mad. I mean, at least they'll have new material for their stale content. Right? Yeah, exactly, right? Oh, my Lord. No, they're all obsessed with Assassin's Creed right now. They've turned... The thing is, it's so interesting. Like, all those people, the you know, the the usual suspects like they all like jumped on X-Men 97 saying like how bad it was but they were all drowned out by people that actually watched it and loved it and so they've moved on from that like have you noticed like none of those guys have been like making that content like saying how like the show sucks you know or the, or the you know at the best they'll say it's like mediocre at best like none of them are covering it now because everyone's like everyone's loving the show and it's so well written and great and so now and now they're all on oh, assassin that assassin's creed is going to be feeding them for um you know, the next several months as they, um, you know, as, as the game release, and then after the game releases, of course. So that's what they're going to be focusing on. So it's all part of the grift. See, once the grift is not working for something, you know, in the case of like X-Men 97, it's like, well, we got to move on now. And so, because you notice they're not covering this. Like none of them are covering this. Like all the would-be obvious people I don't like to name because I don't like to give them any, uh, uh, you know, uh, attention at all. But all of them are not covering X-Men. They initially did because it was like the new thing that was out. And then after that, after it just get, and after episode five, it's like none of them are covering it because they can't capitalize on it. Because everyone, so many, not everyone, but so many people, the majority of people are saying this is great. This is like one of the best things out of Marvel animation of all time. It's one of the best things that have come out of Marvel recently, et cetera, et cetera. So they have to, they have to move on because no one's going to like be like, really? Really? Grip is full of shit, 100%. The grifter scene. Doctor Strange doing heart surgery with candles and magic. So I like that. I like that. I thought, and it was, that was the best place for him. They knew it. They knew that was the best place for him. I thought that was really, they really thought that through. It's not like him reading a fucking book or something. They're like, oh, what's going on? It's like, no, he's there at the hospital because that's what he used to do. And, they, and no, they can't perform surgery, but he can using his magic. I thought that was very smart. I thought that was a great way to use his powers and to feature him, even if it was a cameo. Bring him back. Uh, for the love of God, bring back real guns. Uh, they can even make a joke about it. Those blasters, guns made us go over budget. It would cost effective. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, full of shit. The rage mongers are always chasing next. Yeah, the X outrage, and they'll, they're going to create, and you know, they're going to create dozens, hundreds of videos. But I, yeah, they've moved on from X97 because they can't get any mileage out of it. So Assassin's Creed is what they'll cover for now until, you know, whatever the next big thing is. Yeah, because they complain, complain about Superman sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't give them exposure. The Rage Mongers probably love the series. I bet they do, but they can't say. That's the thing. That's the thing. Where you and that's it always comes down to it. like their critiques are just you know they're coming from a, a horrific places, you know, and resentment and racism and sex. As, as, you know, we can we can go through it, but um, but you can then it's so obvious that they're grifting because you know they they themselves are probably liking it as well, but they can't say it because they've already established this show sucks because that's their whole brand you know and so they, that's why they've moved on they are probably they're they are definitely watching it though they said they submitted the genosha episode for the end oh should 100 uh, percent. yeah 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 uh, definitely the lead right now just tony story i hope he does have a mullet that'd be hilarious so apparently found mjs yeah we talked about that need spider-man 96 to find uh, well technically it means spider-man 90 actually <laughs> Um, I think it was 98 when Spider-Man yeah, made series went off the air but I could be wrong could be wrong but, uh, but that'd be cool 
Or they can call it Spider-Man 97 for all. They, since this takes place in the year 97, so they can just do that. Uh, we bring it full circle if they adapt Age of Apocalypse in the show. Because a two-part episode from the 90s series actually spread the thriller. Look at that. But some of the audiences that, uh, have audience capture. What's that? Audience capture. And cannot make uh, hater content. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what you understand. Well, I mean, that's their audience. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like their audience just goes to them just they expect that. So, you know. Um... It'd be funny if they love the series when the series kind of call people like them out in the second. I know, like the Friends of Humanity. It's like, it was like it's, that, it's that funny moment where it's like, are we the baddies? It's like, yeah. <laughs> when they stormed the, storm the, the court out. They stormed the, um, the, the UN. Yeah, I know what they were doing there. Um, let's see X-Men versus Avengers in a full-length animated film. I think what they'll, they'll do that in the movies. They'll do a X-Men versus Avengers um, live-action film eventually. But, um... But yeah, yeah, with that, I think with that, I think that's a good, that was, uh, that was an excellent spoiler review. I think we covered a lot. I know there's probably even more we can possibly cover, but I do hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad we did this. I'm glad we can have these discussions. It was very laid back, you know, just very conversational. I want to read a lot of your comments. I'm sorry if I skipped over some. I was just trying to cover as many people's opinions on this as possible, obviously. But, um, but yeah, I, uh. I really, I, I really enjoyed this show. I think it's, I think it's great. I highly recommend other people checking it out. Um, whether or not you are, uh, if you watch the original series or not, it's, it's just, it's just really, it's just a wonderful adaptation of these characters. It's a wonderful continuation of a beloved show. And it just shows you what can be done with, within this genre. You know, as I said before, I, I really dislike it when you have these people come out and say like certain genres aren't cinema, for instance, or they talk down to just genre filmmakers and writers and things. And it's just like, well, sometimes the things that these genre filmmakers do are infinitely better than anything you've done in years. So and that's certainly the case of X-Men 97. It really shows what you could, uh, what you can do with this within the medium of animation too. That's the other thing. I really also dislike the way you have so many people that dismiss and demean animators and people that tell stories within this medium. And this is just a, a one, another, another example out of so many of examples that show you what you can do and the stories that you can tell. And I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. But that brings an end to my spoiler review. Ladies and gentlemen, I pause. Yeah, I got to bed. See you tomorrow on Discord. Discord. Yes, Discord Discourse. We're going to continue X-Men 97. We're going to be doing a spoiler review for the entire first season. It's going to be super duper fun. Have a great night, Berserker. Cabby. Check out Berserker's channel. Check out her platforms, her content, Twitch, YouTube, all that good stuff. And she's an artist, so you can commission her for things as well, if commissions are obviously open. Uh, there you go. There you go, chat. Well, my guess superhero content ain't their company. No, no, that's fine. No, that's I said before. That's uh, Notice I did not say, if you're just not, you just don't like it, that's fine. You just don't like that. You don't like horror films. You don't like that. But it's when you start to say these things aren't cinema. These things aren't art these things are beneath me then i'm like you're just an asshole <laughs> that's that's my thing you're you're you just you just don't know and you're not nearly as smart as you like to think you are so that's my whole thing that's my thing and yeah something like this proves those people wrong